All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Small Data SF, and I have Hamilton from Mother Duck with me. Super excited to chat with you, uh, Hamilton, and kind of excited to learn a little about your journey. Can you tell us more about why did you start with Mother Duck? What was the reason? I know you were a data scientist before this, and you've worked in big data a lot, and I'm seeing you here at Small Data so SF. So I'm kind of excited to learn a little about yourself, about what was the reason behind joining Mother Duck? Yeah, sure. Um, so I used to be a data scientist. Right. Um, when I became a data scientist, I think the idea of big data was just becoming a big deal. Mm. Um, and I remember using BigQuery and thinking it was such a breath of fresh air. Amazing to be able to write SQL and transform a lot of data. Right. But I think as I began to really get into analyses, um, I discovered that I wasn't really ever doing my analyses on the full data set. Mm. So I was using samples of data or just the most, the last week of data or something like that. Enough data that I could just pull down locally on my laptop where I could just kind of quickly iterate over it. Right. And over the years, I began to notice that my laptops were getting better. Yeah. <laughs> and faster. Powerful. It, yeah. And, it, and the experience became better and better mm. doing data analysis locally than it was always shipping my SQL query off to the cloud somewhere and waiting for something to happen to crunch a bunch of data to get a number that was already so close to my, the same thing with a sample. I'm like, something is off with this. Yeah. And, but the problem is I'm just using CSV files and that was kind of, kind of a shame. Right. Um, and then I discovered DuckDB and mm. I realized, oh, there is a database that's actually purpose built for the kind of workflows that I care exactly. about. Exactly. And so that's how I got interested in DuckDB originally. Um, and so when I discovered Mother Duck, actually, I realized there is a company that is going to take that, that advantage, that thing that's really cool about DuckDB, nice. but also make it scale. Right. So that you have all of the benefits of databases in the cloud, but all of the ergonomics that mm. I loved about DuckDB originally. Yeah. So that's actually what drew me to Mother Duck. And now, I'm not a data scientist, I'm a UI engineer. So I'm actually mm. working on the SQL interface. And nice. really, the thing that I care the most about is building tools for data engineers, data scientists, Ladies analysts, please join to work with data. Right. Sessions are beginning. I guess so. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how I got my start. And that's kind of what, what gets me up in the morning to work at Mother Doc, is that. That's awesome. That's a very good backstory, and thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of excited to also learn about. I know Mother Duck is one of the co-organizers for this event, uh, Small Data. What What was the reason behind putting such a event together? I know there are. I met a lot of enterprise leaders here as well. So obviously, we'll get on that topic a little later. But what was the reason? What's like the motivation for Small Data? It's a great question. So I think to understand small data, you have to understand the whole trend of big data. Right? True. And big data as a concept came about over a decade ago. The idea behind it is it's easier to collect data now than it's ever been before, in part because of the internet and because modern products just generate a lot of data. Right. And the idea is that we need systems that, are, that will enable us to aggregate and crunch down that data to provide insights of some kind. Yeah. And just the sheer scale of that is going to totally inundate businesses. So we need big data systems to do that. So that was the premise of big data. Yeah. But in practice, what ended up happening is that the computers got way, they got faster, faster than the data got bigger. Mm. And it turned out that most of the time, people didn't really have big data. They had actually fairly small data. And the definition of small has totally changed. The goalposts keep moving, because as computers get better, big data becomes smaller, small data. essentially. Yeah. yeah. And so things that I can do today on my, lap, on my MacBook Pro, um, today I can crunch data faster and just better than I could even just two years ago because of wow. technologies like DuckDB yeah. and, and other, other projects like that. And so I think that kind of philosophical Countercurrent is kind of what is small data is all about. Right. Turns out you don't need a big database in the sky to do things uh, with data anymore. That's awesome. That's uh, fantastic. Those are fantastic insights. I'm kind of also curious to learn about you know when you talk about like obviously powerful machines do wonders, and we are kind of uh, seeing that already. I'm kind of curious to also see from an enterprise point of view because I think sometimes enterprise leaders have like a certain focus, like if it's 
and we've been listening that from since last 20 years about big data, right? So they have that focus always where, oh, we're working in big data. What's, what's this new thing, small data, right? How do you kind of shift that mindset? I've been seeing, obviously, it's, it's, it's difficult, but not impossible. There are, you know, obviously, I spoke to enterprise leaders here, and they're like, we've been using Duck TV. Yeah. Uh, we've been using Mother Duck. And I'm like, okay, you, you guys are already into it. And they were super excited about the conference as well. So kind of curious to learn up from you about what, how would you want to, you know, how does that mind shift yeah. happen? Like, how does that's, that happen? I think that's a great question. I think one, uh, I remember talking to a group PM at a well-known data company. Right. This was like three or four years ago. And he said something that has stuck with me mm. ever since. And this is a very successful data infrastructure company. Nice. And he said, like 90% of their customers do not need the scale afforded by their product. I think about that a lot. 90% of customers, that's a, that's a huge amount of Huge, exactly, 90%, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, so I think that um, enterprise leaders have been told, I think that they're going to have really big data. And maybe to some extent it's aspirational too. Like they yeah. buy the tool because they're like, it's going to go well, we're in. If it's successful, we'll put more and more data into it. And it's basically our you know, usage is going to grow. And it's great. We need a big data system for that. But it turns out in practice, when this happens, while your data does grow, it never grows to the scale necessary for those types of products. Right. And I think that a lot of enterprise leaders are starting to see that as well. And that's why you're seeing DuckDB used strategically in different parts of the stack. Right, actually, right. Because it can do really amazing things. I think I saw somebody post on X something like, DuckDB could completely reverse the costs of global warming caused by the JVM. Something like <laughs> wow, that. Wow, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I think there is something to be said for these like, awesome purpose-built systems running on super powerful computers. Right. So people are already experimenting with DuckDB as it is now. So yeah. I think we're going to just see more and more of that, especially as there's more solutions that people can point to saying like, oh, here's a place where DuckDB excels like every other piece of architecture we have now. So I'm excited to see where that actually goes. That's awesome. And I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little about, you know, what's next? Uh, with small data, obviously we've been seeing now the interest kind of being developed. Do you think this is like the new big thing? Interesting, yeah. So I think one, one thing that we're seeing a lot now, just generally within the, the world of application development and tech is local first development. Right. I think if you do front end engineering, you experience this a lot. You're in the dev mode, working on a, a React app or something like that. And um, anything that you write in your code and you hit save, you see it instantly appear in a preview. Right, right. right. That's awesome, right? That's how, that's how front end engineering works today. That's what people expect. Right. Um, people that work with data don't expect that, right? They, they, they're like, okay, I've got my SQL query, I've written it, I'm gonna hit the run button, I'm sending that piece of mail on horseback to the <laughs> server, and waiting for it to come back, right? Yeah, yeah. But front-end development is fast, Figma, if you've ever used Figma, yeah. it's like practic, it's real-time, exactly. collaborative, Slack is fast, video chat is fast, everything else in our work life is fast. Mm. But for some reason, data work is not, it's slow. We're stuck in the slow era still for some yeah, reason. Yeah. So that's something that I'm actually really excited about. Um, DuckDB has a project called DuckDB Wasm, mm. which I'm really excited about. And obviously it connects to Mother Duck, which makes it really, really cool. Yeah. But essentially you can choose the best of both worlds and get instant feedback on any of your SQL queries that you're writing because you're able to actually use essentially a fully working version of DuckDB running in the browser. Mm. And that can actually provide an experience closer to front end web development than you would get in your typical SQL console. Love it. And uh, thanks for sharing those insights. Uh, also about the conference, right? Uh, here you've been meeting uh, the community, different leaders from enterprise leaders coming in. Any any key takeaways? What have you been hearing about? You know, What did they feel about small data? How did they feel about the conference as well? And is this going to be a yearly thing as well that we can expect? I hope so. I mean, it's it's been very well attended, so yeah. it's clear that the, the the idea of this conference resonates with people. Right. I think that there's there's so many different directions this this can go. Um, I think that people are ranging from kind of true believers in small data to just being curious. Yeah. And I think that um, really, I think 
pushing this counter current yeah. into the mainstream of tech is going to require a number of years. This is like a long, a long game to get people to realize that they may not actually need big data. Anymore. Yeah. So yeah. I like to think of it more kind of long term. Yeah, ask me about it. I was at Big Data London last week. Oh, yeah. Here I'm with Small Data SF. <laughs> you get around. Covering it all. <laughs> and I, I obviously wanted to, you know, obviously wanted to make sure that what's this conference about? And I've seen Unreal community coming here. There's a, you know, I know the speaker, um, you know, the speaker uh, subscription was overloaded as well. There are speakers who wanted to speak, and but then, the agenda is full, so there's a lot of interest that I'm kind of seeing. So there's amazing big names at the speaker list as well. I'm moderating a panel as well, so I'm kind of excited about That's it. Great. Yeah. yeah, but uh, Hamilton, such a pleasure chatting with you today. Yeah. One last question for you, and I'm pretty sure the audience would love to reach out to you. Is X a good place? LinkedIn a good place? Where can they reach out and learn more about small data, Mother Duck, Duck DB, and much more? Yeah, definitely. You can. Um Find me on X at Hamilton Ulmer. Awesome. And I'm kind of on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. So uh, X is his place. So feel free to reach out to Hamilton. Thanks again for doing this. Such a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you. Awesome.